order to now it's flying at almost negative angle of attack, generating negative lift for balance. Yes, I'm losing the lift of the airplane, but it's inevitable. Okay, for balance. I will try I will I will have to generate more lift on the way. <coughs> so uh, this is what we discussed last time. Anybody remembers the name of this angle? I see. This is the incidence of the day. How you install the horizontal term there? Of course, I'm exaggerating. It's typically one or two degrees. So this is the lift on the day. At any moment in flight, this equality has to hold. The moment coming from the wing equals the moment coming from the day. So that summation all the moments is zero at the center of gravity. I don't care about any other point. Any question about that? Okay, I mean, this is intuitive, nothing new here. The issue is, during flight, I need to control my lift. Sometimes I need a larger lift, smaller lift, okay. to do maneuvers, to achieve my mission. If I change this guy, the purple moment here will change, okay? As such, I will have to change this blue moment as well. Which means I need to control the lift over the tail, okay? I need to control the lift over the tail to control the moment of the airplane. How can I achieve that? Any suggestion how to control the lift over any surface? So, exactly. So, uh, well, you can change the angle of attack, you can change this guy, but this is hard to achieve in flight, right? The huge horizontal tail to move it in flight. This might not be practical. So uh, this is why we have flags. Okay. This angle, or the delta flap, changes the lift and the moment on a two-dimensional airport. Okay. So uh, We have this surface. Anybody see this blue surface? We call it elevator. It moves up and down. It moves up and down. So we have hinge here, and we move this part of the surface up and down. Okay? Like here, the two dimensional version of it, it says that this part we move it up and down. When you move a flap deflection, you deflect your flap downward, anybody remembers from two dimensional aerodynamics, this is 2D, okay? And like we always do, we're gonna discuss the 2D, just remind you of the 2D, uh, discuss how things change when we go to the 3D and then get the whole effect of the airplane. So if you have an airfoil and you deflect part of the airfoil, towards the trailing case, we call it a flag. This part we call it a flag, I don't know it. Now we deflect it upward and downward to control the lift. If you deflect it downward, there is an increase in the lift at the aerodynamic center and a pitching down moment. Change in the lift, change in the moment. Let me do small case here because we're two dimensional, right? So this change in the lift, change in the moment, and from the two-dimensional dynamic, here is the, the change in the lift coefficient, delta CL is actually CL alpha times something called tau times the delta flap. So it's linear delta flap. The more the more you deflect your flap, the more you get as change in the lift. So you get the flap downward, you get extra lift. Anybody can suggest why, what is the reason why when I deflect the flap downward, I get extra lift? Because now your foil is, looks like this. This is definitely more camber. 
right? Deflecting the flow <coughs> on a more curved surface. So you're getting more lift. And uh, because we're talking about small angles, everything is linear, so the more you deflect your flap, the more you get in terms of flap. Okay? So uh, this is CL alpha, two dimensions, which is typically two pi or around two pi, for, for two dimensional dynamics. What about this tau? This tau, we, from the linear fold theory, we have an analytical expression for it. I will not write it down for you because we don't need it, but just reminding you that tau is a function of how large is your flap, the chord of the flap over the chord of the whole airport. This is the chord of your flap. Okay? Typically, it's it's uh, it's quarter of the whole. <coughs> Typically, it's quarter. So uh, this tau depends on how large your flap is. This two-dimensional, three-dimensional, by by this surface. <coughs> Simply from the aspect ratio times your flap deflection 10 degrees times some factor. 
depending on how large your elevator with respect to the horizontal thing. Okay? Okay, how, how you get this factor? Well, we have this figure already generated. You go by something called control surface area divided by the lifting surface area. This figure is applicable to any three-dimensional surface, given any three-dimensional surface like this. We have some control surface, or a flat, we call it either control surface or a flat. We have this control surface, or the flat, and I need to, to get this flat sensitivity. Right? This is basically the sensitivity, how effective your flat is. If you're giving one degree, how much lift you're going to get out of that. Right? So this tau simply depending on the control surface area over the lifting surface area. And here, the control surface area is the area of this blue part. The part that you control, that you move, divided by the whole area, which is the area of the tail. That's the tail. Thank you. Yeah. So that plane is moving in this direction, okay? And I want to do, say, here is the elevator. So I deflected the elevator down. What will happen to the horizontal tail? The lift will increase or decrease. If you deflect a flap down, what will happen to the lift? Increase, okay? Maybe it's counterintuitive, but this is what we have here. When you deflect down, you get extra lift, okay? When you deflect down, you get extra lift, and this is the horizontal tilt. The CG is ahead. So the moment will be a pitching down. So there's no confusion. Elevator down, airplane down. Elevator up, airplane up. Okay? No confusion on the airplane control surface. Elevator down, airplane down, elevator up, airplane up. So here is the elevator. When you deflect it down, you get up or left. And here is the CG. You get negative more. Okay? Pitching down. Now it's called the canal surface. And I have my large wing 